Hi YouTube, I'm Chance. I will be starting a new YouTube channel um, based around kind of prepping, uh, hiking, camping, hunting, outdoor kind of stuff. We're just going to call it Mancraft in general. Um, bushcrafting is another favorite thing of mine, uh, but we're just going to call the whole big ball of wax Mancraft. Um, uh, first of all, a little background on me. I, um, I'm in Ohio currently, but I'm from Tennessee. I'm going to school up here. Uh, Graduated from the Fire Academy recently. I am also in the University of Northwestern Ohio in Lima for high performance, applied technologies, high performance, uh, building, maintaining race cars, essentially. Um, but since I've been up here, uh, just kind of started prepping a lot more than I did back home because back home I pretty much had everything. I lived on a beef ranch. I'm going to take a seat. Um, I lived on a, a beef ranch in uh, Cookville, Tennessee. Um, so as far as prepping goes, we had all the things to make our own ammunition and we always had stuff, canned goods in the house. So we were prepping and we didn't even know it. We just called it, you know, living. Kids, when you live out in the boondocks, you got all that shit anyway. Uh, and if the shit hit the fan, we had, you know, 50 plus head of cattle standing outside, you know, as long as, you know, they had hay and we always had hay and feed for a year. So... We could feed our entire neighborhood for a year plus based on the beef. And then, hell, what you can find in the woods, you can add the vegetable part of it. So when I came up here, now I live in cornfields and, you know, you're, I'm living in the outskirts of a somewhat big city, Lima, Ohio. Um, it's kind of a shithole, to be honest. Uh, think Detroit crossed with, like... Nashville. It's not pretty. Um, but where my school is and where I live, it's better. Uh, but anyway, um, moving on. Since I moved up here, uh, I just kind of started prepping because I realized more or less I'm going to have to be mobile because the food and the resources in this county aren't necessarily all together, you know. It's flat, so finding standing water, you're going to have to go a good distance. Big problem is, in Lima, the nearest natural water supply is next to a prison. Let me say that again. The next nearest natural water supply, as in river, creek, and pond, all of them are in seeing distance of a prison. If the whole world goes to hell in a handbasket, the first thing I'm going to do is not go near a prison. So, that means I have to find other means of getting water and so on and so forth. So then, it just became more or less everything I'm going to have to do has got to become mobile. Well, I'm going to also, this video, I know it's kind of going a little long, I want to give you a little background on me before I started. Um, I support the Second Amendment. That one's pretty straightforward. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, um, we're going to kind of go through a basic, I call it the Walmart prep, because a lot of it I can get from Walmart, and it's it's decent gear. I've used all of it, um, all except my new pack. I have a, an Alice pack I'll show it to you from, you know, like Vietnam, 80s era Alice pack. Um, I used it as my hiking backpack for a long time until, I, you know, the more you use an Alice pack, the more you realize that the Alice pack probably isn't the best thing out there. And bringing the weight closer to your back and higher up probably does a little better as far as walking around. Yeah, it, it took me doing like eight miles on a grade that was like this. For every foot you went forward, you went 18 inches up or down, depending on which way you were going. It took that to realize, you know, Alice pack probably wasn't a good idea. Anyway. Let's move on. Um, what I have behind me is basically my Walmart Dick Sporting Goods prep, you know, kind of all wadded together, um, minus the food, um, all my foods in my cabinets as far as that goes. Uh, a lot of it's uh, field stripped MREs. I was in the ROTC program at the University of Northwestern Ohio for two and a half years, so I still have like a lot of MREs. I still have gear from that, I, different things. Um, so I have... Uh, Field stripped MREs, I have, you know, food, I have canned goods, I have, I have stuff. If I needed to go, 
I could throw four days worth of food in this pack and probably only add about five, ten pounds. I weighed it up one day. But let's go on with what we were, what we're going to do. All right, so it's always important before you start, don't buy the bag first. Buy the bag after you've bought everything you're going to put in the bag. Um, so, for instance, this is my girlfriend's pack. Well, I mean El Chico, I mean El Chico. This is the, the outdoor gear. It's got two, it's, it is framed, it's an internal frame. It's got two frame stays in the back, so it doesn't flex this way, but it flexes this way, which is really okay. Um, this is a 45 liter pack. It's good for, you know, day trips and stuff like that. And when we go hiking, she usually carries some of the lighter, fluffier items in here. Um, more or less just because I'm a gentleman and I don't like the way ladies carry the heavy, heavy, heavy weight. Ladies, don't take me wrong on that. That's not because I discriminate. That is surely because I'm a gentleman and I don't make my woman carry all the weight. I know some hikers and some hunters that would feel the other way around about that. So, anyway. Um, but this is kind of a cross between camping and surviving when you kind of don't know how long you're going to be out there. Um, this isn't a three-day get-home bag. This isn't a one-day, oh, shit, I need to get from my, you know, broken-down car back to my house in town. This is, oh, fuck, Red Dawn just happened, and I got to get out, but I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. Or if I'm even coming back. And first thing we're going to go through is shelter. So... Looks bulky, right? Well, it's really not. This can go, these are, this is a tent, by the way. This is a two-person tent from Ozark Trail, which actually, it's about 30 bucks at Walmart. It's a really good tent. I have another uh, Coleman tent that I probably paid $300 for, and this one's actually made better. Um, this is your tent poles. This is the actual outside of the tent. Just your, your dome-style tent. Here's your rain fly, and this is actually a doormat, no shit, so you can like set your muddy boots and your gear out in front of it. Um, with this tent, I'm probably going to get a tarp system and uh, put camo on it so you really can't see the tent um, if I need to cloak it. And because you can get tarps, please take your environment into consideration. So I'm probably going to make a tan one with a lot of stripes on it because... I can walk into a cornfield, beat myself down a spot to make a tent if the corn's up, bed myself down in that, and I guarantee MT, you can fly over me with a helicopter, and if I've done the camo right, you can't see me. In the winter time, like right now, everything's white and there's little black specks because you can obviously see through, you know, where the grass stood up and you see the dirt and all this. So you're gonna have to do some type of winter camo. And then the green seasons between when the, when the corn's starting to come up, if you go out and outcropping of trees or something like that, you obviously some, need some green woodland camo. More or less, you probably could just buy a GI surplus poncho and throw it over the top of the tent, over the rain fly, cover up the blue part, and you'd probably be just fine. But that's this. And as far as the tent goes, it's very lightweight. I think it might weigh two or three pounds. Uh, this is wadded up, and it probably weighs... No, oh, this probably weighs two pounds. Poles don't even weigh a pound. The rain fly weighs next to nothing. So, you know, that is the, the shelter part of it. And a, a, people don't realize a two-person tent, it, it'll almost fill up this small room. It's really more like a four-person tent. They say two-person tent if you don't want to be butt buddies with everybody. But if the world's coming to an end, you're going to cuddle up with whoever. I can fit six people in a two-person tent, to be honest. Um, next thing, sleep system. Um, this is from La Fuma. This is a 45-degree bag, and it's actually not compressed down all the way. It gets a lot smaller. Um, this bag is a really nice bag. It's goose down. I actually got this one on sale at uh, MC Sports. I think I paid $29 for it. This is a $75 bag. Sell from hell. I got lucky. Um, if you don't have that option. Ozark Trail makes this, which is a mummy. It's a 40-degree bag. And it's actually really nice. This is another goose down bag. Um, kind of in that same size category, you know, about the size of a shoe. Doesn't weigh much of anything. I think it weighs maybe, you know, two or three pounds. Um, that bag is actually really nice. It's got the, the collar up here so you can seal the heat off down in here. And um, if you're in a survival type situation, 
you're going to want to take your shoes off at night, but you're not going to want to have to shed all your clothes. Um, probably only the, the very outer layer if it's muddy and nasty, but if it's freezing outside, you're not going to strip down and you're not going to want some Sub-Zero bag. Now, if you want to spend the money, that's fine. The reason I picked 40 was because I can wear enough layers that when I get in a, a bag like that in the cold, given the fact I have a double wall tent and I have a 40 degree bag and then I put on my my cold weather gear, maybe minus my soft shell jacket, and I have a shimog I wrap around my face, I can sleep in some pretty goddamn cold weather, especially because, you know, if you're smart, you get some boughs or something and put it under the tent so you're not sleeping on the ground. It's not going to suck the heat out of you as near as bad. And you can sleep through some pretty cold weather. Now granted, if it's just real damn cold, like teens, zero or below, you're going to be sleeping next to the fire. You may not even be in the tent, for Christ's sake. You may just, hell, roll this out as a big-ass tarp, put some boughs underneath it, and sleep right next to the fire. That's fine. Do it. Um, anyway, moving on. Simplest solution to fire. Yes, I have ferrocium rods and quick tinder. But your best option is just a zippo. Um, I actually need to put fluid in mine. I have used the last of it up today. Um, but zippo. I don't smoke, but I use this for freaking everything. Um, I actually glued a Magnum boot logo on the front of it, forgot what that is, um, best thing in the world, just simple, idiot proof, wind proof, you know, just get your tinder bundle together, you know, if you need help figuring out a tinder bundle, look it up on YouTube, there's plenty of videos, and the nice thing about it is, compared to everything else, because it still makes this nice, big, healthy spark, you may not even need a Zippo with fluid in it to get it to work. If you have a good tinder bottle, you may be able to just get right on top of it and spark it a couple times. And if you have some nice dry moss or a cotton ball or anything because you're scavenging around, a cotton ball or even if you have tinder quick or quick tinders, whatever you want to call them, or wet fire or anything like that, you get some of that sparks on it and it takes off. Well, then there you go. All you really need is this. Um... Real quick, I'm going to go over some of the gear I kind of wear every day, but would definitely help. This is a Blackhawk uh, 7 and 3 quarters, or I'm sorry, inch and 3 quarters um, riggers, instructors, whatever the hell you want to call it, belt. Um, it's Kydex lined all the way through, five layers, a quarter of nylon. Very, very nice. Um, and the climbing loop does work. I've actually put myself on a ceiling winch in one of my classes. Yeah, we have those. Um, big winch hanging from the ceiling. I snapped off to it and just like picked myself up just to prove a point. Uh, works very well. It's actually fairly comfortable to sit in. Um, something else you see on me, obviously, I got my uh, Taurus 709 Slim in a Ataga leather holster and a El Crappy mag pouch from Condor, but it works. Spare mag. But that would definitely be on the, uh, the list of bug out gear, get the hell out of town gear, um, anything like that. Um, moving on right down the line, knives, I have two options, the Walmart option and the eBay option. The eBay option is actually pretty good, and so is the Walmart option. Sog Seal Pup. Um, now it may not be Johnny Bushcraft knife, but full tang knife made out of good steel. That they give it to you, just razor stupid sharp, and it's, you know, a dual-edged knife, and when you put it in your hand, you're kind of going, wow, that's kind of fits everybody's hand pretty good. It's a very good knife. It's coated. I've done everything from skin fish with it to, you know, actually do some bushcrafting and some batoning. Um, going against what a lot of people say, I actually baton a lot of wood using the uh, serrations. It seems to hold its track a little better, and you're not boogering up your uh, your fine working edge. So a lot of times I'll just put the, the teeth right in it and baton straight through whatever piece of wood. But the SOG Seal Pup, I think they're going for like $34 at Walmart or something like that. And the sheath that comes in is actually fairly nice. It's got a pocket on the front and it's uh, snap and Velcro. It's got a pocket on the front and put some tinder or some 550 cord or whatever you'd like in there. It's got all kinds of molly web and it snaps in the back. It's nice. Second thing, 
the Gerber LMF2. This is about $60 on eBay, and it comes with a cord cutter. Very nice. I actually uh, put this in my fire gear when I went through the academy and used it as a, 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 a extrication tool. It's got a nice big uh, hilt punch on it. I used it to break glass. It does a great job of doing that. And uh, you can tell from all of the scarring all over it, I cut windshields out of a car with it. Um, very robust knife. Um, holds the edge very well. If you can not tell, I have beaten the ever-living shit out of this knife. I actually blunted the tip uh, on it because um, I was trying to stab through something. And I stabbed through it and hit, hit concrete underneath it and blunted the tip. So I just uh, took a file and reground the tip back on it. So it's functional. Um, you can wrap a handle, uh, more paracord on the handle of this. You can make yourself a lanyard, whatever. Um, sheath. Got a, a Kydex modular. It's Kydex or, or it's a, I'm sorry, ballistic nylon, uh, hardened ballistic nylon wrapped, or I'm sorry, it's not nylon. It's nylon reinforced plastic. I was trying to think of the word. Sorry. Um, nylon reinforced plastic with a rubber coating on the outside. This slot, if you actually take the holster off of the, the webbing backing, that's actually a sharpener, a drag-through style sharpener. It's got carbide V's in it. So you can sharpen the knife with the sheath. So there is no reason for this to ever be dull because you have the solution in your hand at all times. Um, moving on from there. Uh, that kind of covers knives. A pocket knife isn't a bad idea. Uh, one you never see me out the house with is this little Kershaw. You can buy that anywhere. I don't actually know the name of it. Um... But I seriously had this thing forever and beaten the ever-living dog shit out of it and just never goes bad. It's just a great knife. They actually did a really good job. You can see down in there how close the tip is to the end of the handle. They pack the biggest blade into the smallest knife that they could. I mean, that's a lot of blade, and I can do a lot of working with that. I mean, hell, I've started fires because this is a nice 90-degree spine on the knife. It's excellent. Can't say enough good things about Kershaw. I think that little pocket knife you can pick up at like MC Sports or something like that for 30 bucks maybe. Um, goes without saying, 550 cord. If you need to ask, you probably just don't need to know. Um, this is a personal preference of mine. These are really heavy uh, Protec uh, 8 Titan fire gloves. These are actually like... NFPA structural fire structural fire fighting gloves. Jesus, my tongue doesn't want to work today. Um, anything's hot, you don't know what you're going to come up against out there. Um, a lot of things you can. I mean, hell, say you need to start a fire and there's you know a burning car that's burnt up, but you can still see something's on fire in it. But you need to open it up. You can get the hood up, but you can't pick it up. You don't have anything to grab a hold of a hot anything with. Structural firefighting gloves. Oh, holy shit. You know, I add an extra five ounces of weight, and now my hands are going to stay warm when it gets real damn cold, and they're going to be protected from any type of heat. So if you're going to move your you know, your fire together at your campsite, well, you can just pick up red hot embers and throw them in the heat. I'm not saying stand there and hold them, but, you know, you can rick your fire back together with your hands as opposed to trying to poke it with a stick and sitting there for a minute you just kind of go and you're done anyway um this is a little basic first aid kit um i have another bag that i actually will take with me kind of a little bailout bag i'll put it on the front of me and front mount it to me it's very small but it is a fully stocked medic bag it's in my car it's in my car all the time so, as far as the whole emergency medicine thing, I got that one covered. We'll probably go through that bag in another video. Um, on your feet, um, I have two big suggestions, three big suggestions that are all sitting in this room. Um, summertime, can't go wrong with, if you're in really rough country, I would suggest the uh, C5T from Rocky. Uh, they have a bit better tread pattern in it, but I am around nothing but asphalt, and I would probably be walking on flat concrete for a while until I got out in the pastures and the cornfields, and even then I'd probably be okay with these. These are the Rocky C4Ts, as you can tell, might have been well used. These are like, call them combat crocs when I was in the ROTC and all that shit. Um, they literally are a big foam croc with 
you know, Cordura and suede on them. They're really comfy. Uh, ask anybody that you know that's a vet, have you ever heard of C4Ts and are they comfy? They'll all go yes and yes. Anyway, you know, if you've had a bad experience, please tell me. I'd like to hear more. Uh, I didn't have a bad experience. Um, these are my Merrells, my waterproof Merrell hiking boots. Um, word to the wise, um, having boots that are waterproof will actually probably hurt you more than having boots that are not waterproof. Um, if it's snowing and wet outside, you're probably not going to forge a creek. If it's hot and wet outside and you have to, that's fine. But you're probably not going to stop on the other side, dump your boots out, build a fire, stand there, dry your boots out for, you know, eight to ten hours and then go on your merry way. You're going to keep walking. So you need something that's going to be able to walk all the water out. Now, these are these were waterproof. How did I unwaterproof them, you ask? I took, and it was kind of time consuming, I took a needle and through all of these venting portions, I poked probably 200 holes in each of these little panels so thousands of times per boot yes pain in the ass but i got the comfy boots that i wanted um and punched thousands of holes through the waterproof membrane and i have stepped in puddles so they are not waterproof anymore i promise i've gotten my feet wet in them and punched a bunch of holes in them so now not only do they wick and squeeze all the water out they breathe they're still warm i will i wear these in the winter time they are still warm even when you stand still, they're still warm. Wind doesn't blow through them. But when you get your feet wet and you start flexing your toe, you start squeezing the water back out. So, um, I don't know the model numbers, but these I think were like last year's Merrells. I picked these up on sale for 50, 60 bucks. Um, another good one, uh, the assault boots from Under Armour. For summer boots, excellent. Um, they're a good kind of all-terrain kind of deal. I'm one word of warning. If you have heel problems, go get a heel pad from like Dr. Scholl's and throw in these things. I've noticed my foot starts kind of sinking in the back, but they're the most comfortable boots I've had on my feet. They seriously feel like tennis shoes, but they still give me that good ankle support. Um, moving on, some of the gear that goes in the bag, clothing-wise, um, ear covers from Redhead. You know, if it's really hot and you want to wear like a ball cap or something like that, keep the top of your head from getting cold, but your ears from getting windburned, that's a good option. Um, I got a PT shirt just because it's not cotton because cotton kills. Um, they're polyester, so they do better when they get sweaty. Um, Izod fleece would be a good, uh, good extra fleece to throw in there. Standard GI socks, and, and obviously I'm just doing this to do the video. I'd probably put a couple pairs of whatever in there. Um, this is, let me see where it go. Yep. Another little thing that if you have a 45 liter pack, all of this will fit in, I promise, and you'll still have lots of room, would be a uh, Primus stove and Primus gas. Put these together. This is a little, you know, it's kind of, uh, think MSR pocket rocket. It's kind of along the same lines. You can, obviously, if you can just throw some sparks at this with a ferrocene rod, hell, you can start this with a ferrocene rod. Screw it on, get hissing gas, blow it in real hard. <laughs> you're good. You're lit, you're running. You can start a fire with this, start a bigger fire with this. You can cook with this. Or if you were in a spot where, say, for instance, it's real cold outside, you have your tent up, you're freezing. You can walk outside and stick a stick under your rain flap so you have air coming out. You unzip the bottom of your tent so you have some air flowing in. You can start this and huddle around this if you were in a I don't need to, anybody to see the light. You know, whole noise, light, discipline deal. This would be another good option because you could then huddle around this, get yourself very warm, keep yourself very warm. Or if you just got wet or rained on, you could, you know, get warm for a second and throw your blanket on and, you know, hold in the warm and cut the gas off. This may be the thing that, you know, saves your life from freezing to death at night. Um, the cans are anywhere between four, two and four dollars, depending if you get the 100 gram can or the 250 gram can. Um, you know, once again, if you have a primus stove and once you get all of your prep together and in the bag, 
you can just start figuring out places to you know throw a hydration bladder and throw primus gas cans because you will realize that this and this is fucking convenient um being able to start a fire in literally about 15 seconds once you throw it all together and start it having fire to cook with or fire to get yourself warm that's substantial and not having to sit there and huff and puff and huff and puff and huff and puff makes life hella easier get all of this over here okay chem lights night sticks whatever you want to call them glow sticks raver toys whatever you want to call them I got them in uh, I think green white and red also good for signaling if you see a helicopter or anything like that put them on it the, put a piece of 550 cord whirl them you know they'll they'll come looking for you another good one to go on your belt would be a leatherman uh, I actually have two. I have the Wave and the uh, Tactical Super Tool in there. We'll, we'll go into a video on this alone. Um, once again, something else brought from the fire service that I carry in here is a uh, Black Diamond Carabiner, an ATC or air traffic controller, and this is about 15 and a half feet of webbing uh, tied in water knot and daisy chained around my uh, carabiner good for anything you need to do if you need to lean over and get something you don't want to fall off you can you know, make yourself a quick harness and clip it onto something and lean over and grab something you know you got to think way outside the box because when the world all goes to hell you don't know what you're going to have to do to be able to survive or get something and if you can macgyver yourself something together that you know can help you out hey better to more power to you i don't have my rope in here but usually this on top of the outside of the bag is usually fixed about 75 feet of static line um more or less if i you know need to because you don't know what's going to happen if you need to like get down off a bridge or something like that no bridge i know of is much higher than 75 feet um or at least 75 feet to then where you could drop to the ground and not you know hurt yourself um 75 to 100 feet of static line is always a great idea extra kind of riggers belt you can make tourniquets out of this you can make swiss seats out of this you can make safety dig devices and shit like that out of this um pen don't know what you may need pen for but hey um also around the pen is about 25 feet of duct tape ranger rolled up on the pen um save and wait save space put it on a pen um, and these are two things, once again, from the whole Walmart bargain bin kind of deal that actually kind of shocked me. Um, this was four, or I want to say about 20 bucks when I got it together as like a, a, a little bundle. It's an Ozark Trail flashlight. Very, very bright flashlight. It's 150 lumens, and it's a true 150 lumens. And this is actually made out of aluminum. It uses AAAs. Um, so you don't have to carry five different kinds of batteries. Everything it takes triple A's, takes tri or everything here takes triple A's. Um, and it was an Ozark flashlight, and it's got good gaskets on it. It's fairly water resistant. I don't know if you'd want to like dunk it in a pond and see if it works, but for you know 19 bucks, good robust flashlight. I have another one of these that I carry with me everywhere. Very very nice. Also, I'd probably recommend this as like a first tactical light if you're on the broke folks budget. You know, I, I, I would, you know, put this on my bedside, you know, for bumps in the night right beside my gun. That's where mine sits because a surefire is a goal of mine, but right now I just don't have the financial wherewithal to get that. But I can afford a, a, a decent, you know, $15 uh, camping light that works really well. And it's, it's pretty idiot proof. It doesn't have multiple settings. It has on and off. With a button on the end, no momentary switch, click on, click off, real basic. Um, another one from same company, Ozark Trail, headlamp. This is a 150 lumen headlamp, and it actually does have different settings. You got bright, dim, and off, and then if you hold it, you have red. Now this, I really wish when I was in ROTC, I would have known about this because this is so goddamn convenient because seriously, bright, dim, off, hold it for red. Why do no other companies do this? This is so smart. 
you know, if you don't want the rest of the lights to come on, just hold it and only red comes on. Hold it and red goes off. You don't have to cycle through all the modes to get to red and give yourself away. You just hold it and red comes on. That is genius. Every time I ever did a land nav course, no telling how many times, you flip your thing down to look at your map and you close your eyes because you're going, well, I got to get past white, yeah, medium, low, blue, green, then red. So I'm sitting there going, click, 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 click. And you crack your eye open to see if you're right. And it's fucking like low. And your night vision's now shot. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, biggest pain in the ass in the world. Hold it, red comes on. Thank you. Whoever made this, it may be a small little chink in use piece of crap. I don't care. Whoever developed it was a very, very smart man. Or woman, whoever. And finally, the bag, it all goes in. Now, I've heard mixed reviews. Um, more or less, I've actually heard good things about the Ozark Trail backpacks. Um, comes with a rain fly in it. So I'm going to get my fingers down in the tail pro. There we go. Yeah, now we're winning. Comes with a rain fly in the bottom. Um, it's a 45 meter bag. It's got an internal frame. It's got frame stays. Very nice. It has the ergo, ergo straps where you can move it up and down the webbing. This is awesome because I am very much a let the weight rest on my hips and I need my, my, my shoulder pads to be where they need to be. And I'm a guy that's all legs and I have a short little stubby torso. I'm five foot ten, but I'm all legs. This is a godsend. Thank you, whoever came up with the movable straps. That's awesome. Because I can put it right where it needs, where my shoulders need to be, which is right here. But then move that in relation to these nice big hip pads. I mean, nice big things. I could load this thing down with 100 pounds. It'd probably be just fine. Um, other than that, I think that's just about got it for us. Um, oh, almost forgot. Gear you wear, you know, kind of on the outside of you. Um, GI... Uh, surplus fleece cap, watch cap, patrol cap, whatever you want to call it, or not patrol cap, your, your fleece watch cap, your beanie. Um, warm, ask anybody that's been in the military. Um, I was only in the ROTC, but we did field training exercises and shit like that. I know I keep referring to this. I'm not Joe Rambo. I just got the gear I got because it was free. Uh, things I got to keep after I got done with that. Um, I was also in the fire academy when I was in ROTC, so you can tell which one won out. Uh, but anyway, thank you to all of our men and women that have served. Um, anyway, back to this. Very warm. Ask anybody that's actually in the military about these things. Warm. Another one from ROTC. Seeing a pattern in here? Um, your polar bear as we call them, or the, the, the green fleece jacket. Um, I actually wear this as my second layer under my, my soft shell jacket. Um, so it's just GI fleece. That and your fleece cap, you're already warm. You're probably good down to 45 degrees, that alone. Then I have a Condor soft shell jacket. Love this thing, of course, it's got, you know, patches galore and shit like that on it, blood type, and, you know, Chris Kyle, rest his soul, got Chris Kyle patch on there. Watchdog patch, um, or sheepdog patch, if you want to be specific. But, uh, go ahead and throw this on. Okay, so this zips up the front, obviously. You got pet zips, you got these big pockets in front that go from up here, where you see my fingers, all the way down here, where you see my fingers again. So you can put guns in there for crying out loud. Um, the hood has a Velcro closure that shuts the hood so you're not, you know, letting shit fall in there. Um, you also can roll the hood up and stow it in the collar. It has a big old honking set of vents in the back to vent your back to the air. It's also a big pocket. So if you wanted to stick anything in there, you could. Um, but usually I'll wear the fleece under this and zip it up. And I'm good. I mean, I have a big, heavy goose down parka. And this system is warmer than that is. And it weighs half as much and is nowhere near as bulky. Um, and finally, um, once 
once again, gotta thank College Kid Budget, and I go to the gun show, and all that shit, and I can find surplus stuff better than I can find new stuff. So here is your standard GI uh, flick vest. Nice thing is, I can still wear it with a uh, rock on or anything like that, and uh, got my admin pouch and shit. Uh, I have med, pal med pockets and a fanny pack for it, and all that shit that goes on it, but this is just stripped down, got to go version. Got your, your pouches for all your ammo and shit like that. And for the most part, that'll wrap it up. Um, questions, comments, anything like that, I will uh, probably put up another video here in a minute with all of this put into the pack, kind of arranged the way I'd want it. And uh, then we'll go on to do some more videos probably today. Have a good one. Everybody be safe. Remember, only you can keep this world the way you want it.